Hi everyone, this is Tammy with Life Begin in a Garden. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn old books into journals. This makes making a journal so much easier. Your cover, front and back, and your spine are already done for you when you do this. So here are some books that I'm going to be using in today's video and I will show you how I take the book apart or what parts I leave or don't leave and how you can turn that into your own journal for whatever type of journal that you want to do. Many of us have old books that uh, are no longer usable as a book and this is a great way to keep that book alive but also create a journal with it. So the first one is really kind of not a book. It's one that you put snapshots in, like pictures all the way through it. And all the way through it, there were just blank pages. I don't know that they make these anymore, but I found this one at Goodwill. And I want to do, I already know what I'm gonna do with this one. I want to do a, um, prayer journal slash ministry missions journal and it's for someone who um, after he retired he gave all his time to God so he does he sings and he has a gospel band and he travels singing and he also travels doing missionary work in other countries and also um, in the United States. So this one is for him, and so I want it to be kind of manly, and I'm not gonna do a whole lot of adding stuff. There's gonna be more pages in here for journaling than, than add-ins, but I am gonna add in some things that represent the places, some of the places anyway that he's been and the work that he does. So. To turn this into a journal is going to be very easy. So I went through here, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's little flaps here. Every other page was perforated, so you could tear it out easily, and it just made a straight tear it down through there. So that's what I did. I went through the whole book and tore out every other page and it leaves this little flap. So then as I add in my pages, I will glue down these flaps. I'll either glue it down on this side and if I add in like a journal page or something, um, like this for instance, if I add a journal page in, I'll slot it under there and align it the way I want it, and then I'll glue that. I'll glue this page down to the black page, and then glue this over it. So, some of these pages I'll make pockets out of, like I'm, I'm starting one here, and it's just going to be, all I do is fold that page down. That's going to, I'll glue that down, and I'll glue this flat down, and I'll decorate this. And then I will glue it to the edges of this, so it'll make a pocket here. And of course, all of this will be decorated. But I'm going to go through the whole thing, doing things like that, and turn this into, like I said, a prayer journal, a uh, missions journal. So this will be another video, and I just want to show you that sometimes you can use books that you really don't have to do anything with. You just decorate the front and tear out the pages you don't want and secure the little flaps and then you've got it. And with that in mind, I want to show you this book. I don't even know what the title of this book is, but I loved this book. So the way that it came, if you open it up, It's like this. So, see, this was the top of the book. 
And this is the bottom of the book. So the book looks like this. So when you open it up, this part had most of the writing for the title of the book or the story that the book was about. Most of the writing was up here. And this was a poem book. So it was also, it was a um, poems about God. So a lot of them were torn up or messed up and pages missing and so it wasn't savable as it was, so I decided to make two books out of it. So this one, even though the spine is really in bad shape, that can be fixed. And this one is going to be a book by itself. So I'm not sure which one, what journal I'll do with this, but um, that's what it's going to be. And this one, is where most of the pictures were. They were at the bottom of the book. See how that is? Like, that's the bottom part of the poem. And it says, As gifts from God above, and thank Him for His lessons in faith and hope and love. So that's not the whole poem, not nearly all of it, but I'm going to leave that anyway because it's just a reminder to thank Him for this lesson in faith and hope and love. Any lesson in faith and hope and love. So it's really got cool illustrations in it. And this is what I'm doing with them. I just went through. This is going to be a book that opens this way. So I went through and made lines all the way down through there to journal in. And if the poem is something that I really like, even though it's not the whole poem, if I like the message there, then I leave that and I journal or I draw my lines, but I don't draw them over that. I'm trying to find a page here where I did that. I really love this page, it's baskets. And just draw the lines over the baskets. And the person that gets this book can journal right over the top of it. And then, this is one. I didn't want to draw the lines over that portion of the poem. So I just drew them around it. So they can journal and then draw a little bit down through here, and then continue without writing over the words. And this was a, a situation where this page was loose, so I just put some tape there, and then help secure and hold that page in. And here's the other side of that part that was loose, and I did the same thing. Okay, so my plan for this book It'll be like this. I'll decorate the front of this. And the title for this journal is going to be My Little Book of Forget-Me-Nots. And it is so that you can journal things that you don't want to forget. And that's why it's called My Little Book of Forget me nots. It is your reminder not to forget maybe it's appointments and you want to journal your appointments all the way through it. Everywhere where there's writing, it is about God. So this would make a great book a prayer reminder of people to pray for or things to pray for. You could journal them in there. And you could even use it as a grocery list, but wouldn't last very long if you did that. You'd have it filled up pretty soon. But um, the world is so hectic right now, and I have a hard time remembering things. So I 
could use one of these myself. This one is going to be as a gift, but I could use one of these myself just to remind myself to do certain things. And then when you're through, especially like if you've written it down as an appointment reminder, whether it's a personal appointment, like with family, or it's doctor's appointments, or um, whatever kind of an appointment you have, it's a great way to write them down and remember them. It's a great size, so very easy to just keep in your purse. And it's fun to write in because it's so cute. I just love that. And it is super, super simple. And this would make a great gift for numerous people in your family. And there's all kinds of things that they could um, write down in there for different things. I mean, they could dedicate it just to grocery shopping or they could dedicate it just to um, prayers for people or things. They could dedicate it to, um, like I said, their appointment books or there's so many things. It's just, it's cool. I love that. Okay, and on the same concept, this is another book that was cut in two. It too was in very bad shape, but this is what the book was. I love this book because of the illustrations and I love the pages in it. I love everything about it. So this actually makes two books now because I left the pages in here. And this one, illustrations, this is actually the top of it. No, the page doesn't go there. This goes down here. Anyway, the top of it, um, there's illustrations. And then in this book, most of the writing is, in, is kind of in the middle. So then on the bottom part of it, there's also illustrations. And it is so neat. I just, I love the, the old illustrations. I love the feel of this paper. It's, it's got a fairly good thickness to it. I don't know if you can hear that. But if it's got just a few words like that, I'll leave those and I'll just draw my lines over it. And this is what I'm doing to it. So it looks so pretty, I think, with the lines drawn over the picture. And it will look even prettier when someone journals over the top of that. So here's where all the words were on these two pages. So I just put another piece of paper there and uh, tea stained it so that it would look old and wouldn't stand out because this book is old. And then I just tore it to fit where the words were. And then of course I used my um, distress ink and I distressed around the edges of it. And now whoever is writing in this book can just turn it right over that. I think that this one would be great to use um, like it shows children all the way through and it's on a farm. So I think that if someone wanted to do a journal for their child, kind of like a mother's journal, but um, journal the events, the things that that child done in their childhood or did in their childhood. So they could dedicate it to that one child and maybe call it, uh, title it You and Me and things that they did with that child. And it doesn't have to even be your child. It could be your grandchild and maybe it's you and your grandchild that you're journaling about. And you journal about the different things that you did with that child during their childhood. And then that child, whether it's a parent doing it or a grandparent or a godfather father or a godmother, either way, it is going to be a great gift to give to that child once you have completed it. And it 
documents, it's like history for them because it documents their childhood and the ways that they spent their childhood with you. So, absolutely love this one. There's nothing that I'm doing to this except that I'm going to antique around the pages like I did on this one. Okay, so if you can see there, I started antiquing around the pages on that. The page itself is already aged, but it kind of puts an edge on the page to like saying, this is all this page is supposed to be. And then everywhere, like where there's a whole section of writing, I'll cover that with a journal page or something like this. And then they have their lines that they can write on there. So there'll be some extra pages added in. But where I can, like this, it says, I wish you could have been there. I'm leaving that because that'll be really neat with the storybook itself. So I'm just leaving that like it is. And I'll do my lines over it. These illustrations are just gorgeous. I absolutely love them. And so, since I'm not adding a lot of stuff in, I can leave all these pages in here. And whoever journals in this book about their self and their child is going to have plenty of room to write and to journal. And, it, and it's so cool the way the lines are done on it that makes you want to journal on it. It's like, I can't imagine anybody not wanting to sit down and journal on these pages. It's just, it's, it's so nice, I love it. So I'm actually on the lookout for more books like this because they're getting harder to find. I don't know if there's anything in here that says, you know, the front part of it's missing, but this says how old this book is, but it was the Alice and Jerry book, so it's pretty old. But this is a way of keeping the book out there, even though the story part was messed up because there are too many pages missing, but um, it still gives plenty of possibilities. And I love that. Okay, so the next one. People have been asking for a cookbook journal. So with this one, um, this one's actually perfect and it's super easy to do. The hardest part maybe is that I'm gonna cut this book down. So this is one of those binders, plastic binders. And on the back you can see that these little things flip out. See how that comes out? So that means that we can take this off of this and take out all those pages and the front and back cover. And then with this off, that's what I'm going to do first, is take that off. And then I'm going to clip all this together using a big clip like this and make sure that it's all where it needs to be, the pages and uh, the front and back and I'll clip it together like if I can even get this clip on here let me see so clip it together like that to hold it in place and I'll do the same thing over here on this side and then I'll cut it in half and so then if you can imagine that the book is cut in half. I'm not gonna leave all these pages in here either because that would be too much to do a scrapbook with. So I'm gonna take maybe, maybe use that many pages, what you see here in the front, and I'm gonna take out all the rest of them. And so once I get that done, Then I'll put the front and whatever pages I decide to keep in it and the bag 
I'll strap them together so that I can cut it without the pages moving. And then I'll be doing a video on this and I will also show in the video how to cut it. And then these pages, I'm, I'm not, what I like about this book is I like that I can make two out of it and I like this. So this will get painted, spray painted, because I don't want that title on it. And the front and of both books and the back of both books will get covered, so you won't see this anymore. But I am going to make it into a cookbook because if it's got like this many pages, maybe that I actually leave in it, and all the rest of these are gone out of it, I might leave more like that. And all the rest of these are gone, so that's like a fourth of the pages whatever's in here a fourth of it is what I'm going to keep and the rest of it I'm not keeping I may use some um, pictures out of it or some words out of it or something but I'm not using the recipes out of this I'm going to use these pages and completely redo them so what you see here is not going to be in the book at all it's just going to be the page it'll be covered and I'll have old recipes in it, a lot of uh, pockets or flip outs or something so that whoever gets these books can actually put their own recipes in there. And that's what I'm doing this for as a cookbook to give us a gift is for people to be able to save their recipes and pass them down to future generations. So I'm going to uh, illustrate them that way as an old recipe book using old handwritten recipes that are actually written out, not, uh, not copies of something. And hopefully then the people who, or the person who uses this book can pass down all of their family recipes to their children or grandchildren. And it'll make two books. So when it's done, you could, like if you imagine that this is cut in half and this part's gone, this part could be a flip up book like this so that the writing goes down this way or still as half a book. It's a book that opens the normal way. So you have plenty of options with this and it's super easy. You don't have to make a binding. It's already there for you. All you need to do is change the color if you don't want blue, and I don't want blue on it, but if you did, or you, you like the color of the one on yours, you don't have to do anything to it. You could actually leave the name of what the book was, and I probably would leave this, except that I don't want the book to be blue, so I'm not gonna be using blue in it. Blue is actually not one of my favorite colors, but, um. And because I'm going to be cutting it in half, it would only show part of part of the name, but that would carry on the book itself. It's, its original first life would be kind of indicated by that. So this is a great way to do it. And like I said, if you've got um, an old cookbook like this, a lot of them are bound like this, especially if it's schools or churches that make cookbooks and sell them. Their cookbooks are like this. They're, they have this as a binding. And if you put that to use, you can turn this into a really neat cookbook. It could be any other book too. It doesn't have to be a cookbook, but it's a great easy way to put together your pages. And then when your pages are out of it, then they're easier to work with, they're easier to decorate, um, like here where it shows the picture down through there, you actually could um, paint that part if you don't want that color there. But really, even just the color there on it would be fine. It's just, it, again, it's going to make two books. And you can make it very personalized. And once you remove most of those pages, you have plenty of room to add on things and the book not get too bulky. Sometimes a scrapbook or a junk journal, which I don't like to call these junk journals, they 
they are in a way that I focus more on the journaling part than I do on all the add-in stuff because I don't want to take space away from people being able to journal in it. But sometimes by the time a junk journal gets done, it's like this and you can't even close it. It's too fat. So I don't want that to happen with this. I want this to be one that will close normally like this once it's done. And that's why I'm taking out so many pages and because it would take forever to redo that many pages in a junk journal. So like I said, I'll keep about this many and all of those will go. Okay, so then I also, by the way, I will go, go through this. See how people had written on it? That's fine with me. That doesn't bother me, but this is a, a book on quick and easy recipes using um, name brand products. That's why it's showing all these on here. But a lot of these I don't like, but some recipes in here I do want to try. And so those are the pages that I will keep. And I'll keep that part of the recipe so that I can try that. But I don't need the whole book just for those, I don't know, 10 or 15 recipes maybe. Okay, here's another one. This is a child's book. What I like about this one well, for one thing, these pages are the really hard ones. Let's see how someone's written on all that. So, it's not a good book. It's in decent shape, I guess, but not a good one to continue. You can see that the binding there is kind of frayed a little bit. It's not a good one to keep and, and uh, keep it out there in circulation as it is. So... What I like about it as a journal is that once you remove, see how the spine does? It's like, you can see in there. So once you remove these pages, leaving the spine part, you leave that there, but you remove these, remove these pages, then you have a front and back cover and what I like about this one is it's got this little peak hole here so whatever I turn this book into which I haven't decided yet what kind of journal but there'll be a little hole so on this front page I'll have something that shows through that so on this one I want to show you how to remove those pages and they're really easy the biggest thing you need to do is what you concern yourself with is that you don't cut into this spine. If you do, unless you cut it completely off, then it's still workable. So I turn it like this and I'm going to cut right down through here. So I'm trying to avoid this part, not cut that. Okay, so with the book open, it pulls that back away. So I like to do that side first. And I'm going to just cut this part. And it doesn't cut it all the way through. You have to still work with it a bit, but it gets it, gets it started. Be careful if you're using a box cutter so you don't cut your finger or something. I'm not sure if that could happen. Once you get it started, you can hold it like that and kind of finish the cut down through there. Okay. So 
So now you've got this little flap here. Which we're leaving because when you put the book together and put pages in it, you can use that. And then we've got these pages that still need to be removed. So now I'm going to this side and we'll cut down through here and remove those. I've got this back out of the way. So I know I'm not going to cut that because it's out of the way. So it's easier actually to cut from this side. So that you can see that you've that you're away from the spine. I'm not going to say this is super easy to do, but it is absolutely doable. And then once it's done, and if you struggle with this yourself to do this, get someone in the family to do it for you. And once it's done, you have a cover for a great book. Okay. You will have frayed pieces like this, but that's not a problem. You're going to be covering all that anyway. And then you have a spine. So then your book will have this much thickness to it. And it can be used for any journal that you, I keep saying book, but every time I say book, I'm really talking about a journal. And you can make any kind of journal you want to out of that. So these pages I'm probably not going to save anything out of this because of how it's written or written on and also because this is like a touch and feel book so it's got little things in here that you can feel like the little fur on that so that's not really something that I can use but I can use this so now this book is the same way and it it had pages that needed to be taken out because it had been written on two kids love to write on books so i've already removed the pages from this but on this one i'm not throwing these away because this can be used so one thing that i did was um i got this started to peel peeling and I peeled off this top layer. And once you get it started, it's probably should have started this to begin with, so you won't have to watch me try. But you do need to know how. Okay, so see that's not bad. Once you peel it off and it peels off easily. So you get it started and then just pull it all the way down. And you do that to the other side. And then you have a page that looks like this. I antiqued around the edges of it. And that's something that can definitely be used as inserts to put in your journal in this one or in other journals that you make. So those are things that are really good to save. And I don't know if you can see the texture on that, but when you pull that other off of it, it leaves a texture that's really soft that leaves a textured background and this can be cut down and you can use it to make little bookmarks out of it there's so many things you can do with these that that's what I'm going to do with all of these pages and then sometimes the picture itself that you tear off is usable also or part of it so I'm also working on a another little chicken keepers journal and this part right here that I've added on to these bigger pages this part 
was off of a book like this. And it was this hem part that I tore off. And then I just tore out the part that I wanted. And you can see it's got a lot of wrinkles. And that's because I kind of crumbled it up and unfolded it and crumbled it and unfolded it um, to get those wrinkles in there because I wanted them in there. And then I aged over it with my Distress Ink so that it looks old. It still has a little bit of a shine to it, but it also looks old, so I'm okay with that. So, like I said, if your pages are usable, that does tear off. And then you have something that you can use here. So even these are not wasted. Or you can make your spine, put two of these together and make a spine like this one has. And then you have another journal cover. So there's a lot of uses for this. So this is another kids book. Again, this one was written in. It actually is in good shape. Otherwise, a little bit of a bend here in the back of it. But as I said, kids love to write in books, all books. So they had written in this one. So I tore all of that out or cut it out. And then this is the spine that was left for it. What I like about this one is that you can mash that spine in and you have a you can make a journal that's that thick. So that shows how thick you can make your journal without it starting to bulge out. That gives you plenty of room to add pages in there. And if you do them in signatures, like where you put the groups of pages together to make one signature, you could probably get easily get three good size signatures in there. And it's a good size book, so it makes a great one for a prayer journal, um, gardener's journal, any kind of journal that you want to turn it into, a cookbook even. These little books, which you can find constantly at Goodwill, you find these little books. They are usually written in, that's why they're by a child, and that's why they're still there. But, like I said, you can give that new life by doing this to it. And you make your job of making a journal so much easier because the cover and the binding is already done for you. So as I use these books, um, I will show you how I add pages to different ones and it'll be, it'll be different ways based on the book that I have and based on what the spine looks like. But I'm doing this video right now so that you can start gathering your books together because I definitely am going to be doing more journal videos. And when I do them, you'll see these books back again, and you will see how I um, add the pages and what I do to it. So right now, I want you to just, if you're interested in making some journals, start going through books. You may have some yourself at home. You most likely do have some books at home that you can use. But start going through them and um, seeing what you can use. This is another one. Um, this one, you can't really, well, you can't do, you can manipulate the spine on it and get it that thick. And sometimes if you're, when you're using a book, you have to go with whatever thickness that the spine has. But in these, this, the past one I showed you, and this one, you can make the spine bigger. And then you have a really chunky journal that isn't bulging out like this when it's done. That bulging is what I actually don't like about junk journals. I want them to stay pretty much the thickness that they that the uh, binding allows. Okay, so this is another one that I will be using. And I think that I'm going to use this one to do a gardener's journal. It 
the spine does not allow you to do that. So it looks like it would pop in, but it doesn't. So the thickness is this right here. However, when you add, that's the thickness of the spine itself, but when you add pages in there, you've got some extra room here because this part, the front and back, stand out from the spine. So you can see that the spine is this thick, but then it gets thicker out here. So that actually allows for you to add things in. The Gardener's Journal is more about the journaling than it is about the add-ins, but I am going to be putting some add-ins in here so that, um, like pockets and stuff, where you can store uh, maybe your seed packets or something. So this is going to make a good Gardener's Journal, and it's about the right size for one. And easy enough to even take out into the garden with you to journal as you're out there gardening. So I'll make this cover be something that doesn't get dirty easy. Or that you can clean off. Okay, my books are trying to fall here. I've got a couple more to show you. So this one... This one was in bad shape too as far as being able to keep. All of these books came from a thrift store or a yard sale. So this one is In the Arms of God and it had um, pages in there that some whoever had the book before had written over what was in it. So not like through the whole book but here and there all the way through it. So um, I took out all those pages, but there are some parts of that book that I am going to use when I do this first one that I showed you. The prayer journal that I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use parts of this. One part that I'm going to use is the title itself, In the Arms of God. It is going to go on here. I'm not going to do anything to this part. This is this is going on there. And then a picture is going on there to cover this. And this is the picture that I'm going to use. So this is giving you kind of a peek at the prayer journal. So the front of this will look like this. So we have that up there and this down here. And then on this one, I'm going to leave the word snaps to show that this actually was a snapshot book. So I'm going to leave that on there and just cover up that part. And then there's some um, Bible verses that, kept, that were on the pages of this one that I'm going to also keep and use in this one. Like this is one goes on one of the pages in there. So I'm going to age around that around it, and it'll be added in here somewhere onto one of these pages. But this book, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with this one. What I'm going to turn it into but many of the books that I just discussed, or journals, rather, that I just discussed, um, this would work for. And it's a good sturdy one, so it can go just like that. And sometimes, too, I want you to understand that sometimes you don't really have to change the book itself. You can leave the outside looking just as it does. And then maybe add a little something down here maybe that says what the book is like in the arms of God and if this was a gardener's journal then I would put something over that that says gardener's journal or a prayer journal because this does say in the arms of, of God this would make a great prayer journal and then the front and cover or front and back is done I would do something to cover up all this down here but I would leave that and I would leave this so, the inside 
this part is very usable. All you have to do is cover up the spine, and I would use tape on that to cover that. And then you have the whole thing done, except for the pages that you add in there. So this would make a really good prayer journal, and that may be exactly what I do with that one as well. So once I get that done, I will show that to you too even if i'm not going step by step with it i'll bring it in on one of the other journals that i'm showing how to do to show you how it how it looked in the end thank you for watching today's video i hope that after watching this you are seeing that all those old books can be put to a new use and i hope you will see all the great possibilities that they hold uh, please continue to watch my channel so that you can see what I do with each of these books. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, may God bless you and have a wonderful day.